Hey coaches, this is Coach Nelson with CornerstoneCoachingAcademy.com. I'm going to change our mental game PowerPoint a little bit. I just had the PowerPoint up before. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to kind of give the speech that I give my players uh, during this time every uh, couple of years. We usually do this uh, this PowerPoint once at the beginning of the year and then once before we head into the postseason just as kind of a, a refresher and then as needed throughout the year. So sometimes I give it twice, sometimes I give it three or four times depending on the mental focus of my team. So um, so let's go ahead and take a look at our mental game uh, PowerPoint. And as you can see, kind of the, the, the thought on it at the front is the champions, championships are won one pitch at a time. And we talk a lot about with our guys about not really knowing when a championship is won or lost, we had a in 2010. We had quite a uh, an interesting finish to our season. Uh, we were down one run with two outs in the bottom of the seventh, and we had uh, two runners on base, and we hit what appeared to be a walk off home run, uh, but the uh, opponent center fielder uh, was able to to rob it and felt over the fence out of play which you know a lot of people thought would make it a home run but since that actually ended the game um, there, there was no uh, advancement of the runners and it was actually an out because he left from the field of play but the point of the point is after that I talk with my players all the time about we never quite know when you win or lose a game or when you win or lose a championship and and so you know yeah, the, the plays at the end of the game get magnified. That play gets magnified. But some of the mistakes we made earlier in the game could have been what really lost that game or even go back as far as to, you know, some of the things we did in the offseason. What if that player who hit that ball had, uh, had had worked out just a little bit harder in the weight room that, that offseason and he got two or three more inches on that uh, than we win and we, we advance. So uh, this is kind of geared towards focusing them on that idea that, that you play the game one pitch at a time mentally and and, and you can certainly achieve higher than, than maybe you thought. So let's go and get started. Uh, we feel that the most one of the most important things with a – good mental approach is developing a pre-pitch routine. Most of the game of baseball is actually downtime. You can be out at the field for two and a half hours and only about eight to 12 minutes of actual game action is going on. And so what you do with the rest of that time can really make the difference between a poor team and a good team, a good team and a great team, a great team and a championship team. So we try to have our guys really focusing during the entire time two and a half hour game um, and so we want to know how you're utilizing that time uh, they're going to recognize the out inning and runner situation in between every pitch uh, and just kind of mentally prepare for the different situations that could come up during that time and we try to go through as many of them with them as we can in practice so they're not guessing so that they have a good idea of you know in this situation what are the different permutations that could happen what are the different things that could happen here um, so we have them try to determine as many uh, possible plays as can happen this is a big one for us and it may not be depending on your field but we our field's kind of up on a hill it's the highest point in the county and the wind is just incredible at our place you know a, a day with 20 mile an hour winds is kind of a calm day and sometimes they blow in usually they blow in but uh, sometimes they blow in sometimes they blow out sometimes they change during the course of an inning and so we always have make sure to tell our guys to check the wind check the weather the other big thing there's a couple of fields we play at where the sun sets directly behind uh, home plate and usually it's right in the right fielder's eyes and so on a somewhat cloudy day one pitch the sun could be shaded on the next pitch the sun could be out and so they have to kind of check the the weather to see where that sun is so that they're not taken by surprise when a fly ball is hit into the sun when the pitch before uh, it was behind the clouds so we have them pick a uh, soft focus target and a hard focus target which we'll talk more about in the individual ideas of how we uh, pitch with a mental pre-pitch routine and hit and so on. Um, so we think about what can we do about the previous pitch. Well, once that's gone, there's nothing you can do about it. So once the previous pitch happens, it's over. And, and that's tough for a lot of players. And that's if you you'll notice on your team, that's really what probably separates some of your better players from some of your average players, even though they may have similar skills. 
Um, so what can we do about the next inning? There's nothing we can do about the next inning. If we're in the third inning and I'm hitting in the fourth, uh, I can't do anything about that yet. So uh, we want to live and play in the moment. And so a quote we use that um, I've seen a lot of people use, and I really like it, is the past is history, the future is a mystery, so we live in the present. Um, here's some ways that players fail with their mental game. Uh, this is probably one of the biggest ones that I see as a bad call. We really, really start this from the time they enter our program is that they are not allowed to let a bad call affect them. It's the easiest way to get out of your game plan. It's your easiest way to get overly emotional. And so we do not let them worry about what umpires uh, do or, or say, and we'll touch a little bit more on that a little um, later, but it, if you let it affect your next pitch or the future, then you're going to fail at your mental game. Uh, bad performances, so they can't be looking back. If they're, if they're 0 for 4 in a day with four strikeouts, they better want that next at bat. They better forget about those four strikeouts. Otherwise, might as well just come up to me and say, hey, coach, uh, I struck out four times today. It's not my day. Why don't you give this at bat to someone else? So you have to put bad performance out of your mind as you're playing this game. Uh, and I think one of the, the hard parts about it is, as I said, is there's 8 to 12 minutes of actual – of actual play time in the game. And so there's a lot of time to think about bad performances if they happen. Um, you can't be concerned with external factors. And this, this is really tough for, for 15 to 18 year olds. You know, who's at the game? Who isn't at the game? Is my girlfriend at the game? Are my parents at the game? Is there a scout behind the plate, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so you can't, you have to try to block those things out as best you can. Um, the, uh, your ego also is a way that can get in, uh, can get in the way of your success and uh, that's basically thinking about what others think of you and we've had some very very good players in the past who've really struggled with this because anytime they fail it's like they take it as a personal attack like how on earth could I strike out against that person or how did I not get a hit in that situation and that again that's just all things that will that will destroy their mental game and won't let them achieve at their highest level possible um, you can't allow past failures to decrease your current confidence playing the game with confidence is absolutely paramount and so it, it, going back to that 0 for 4 if you go 0 for 4 if you walk the last two hitters that cannot affect what's going on per uh, presently and then also you can't allow past successes to give you a false sense of security so one of the 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 phrases that we're using this year with our team is good is the enemy of great and that kind of follows this thought is that if you've had success in the past, you can't, that doesn't dictate future success. So just because you beat a team before, or just because you got a hit off a pitcher, or just because you struck someone out, doesn't mean that that's going to happen again. Okay, that's the great part about the game. Otherwise, there'd be, you'd just you know, play an inning and then say, well, you won one nothing, and so obviously the score of the game is going to be 7 nothing. so let's stop here. So we can't allow our past success, uh, successes to give us a false sense of security either. All right, so things that uh, how players fail to play one pitch at a time, worrying about statistics. This one's absolutely huge. Um, we've we've gotten rid of completely gotten rid of batting average. We use some other statistics, quality at bat percentage, and a few other things to to allow them to see how successful they're being. But statistics is a horrible way to uh, to go about playing this game. And we, if you take an O for four but you're able to get a walk, get a runner in from third with a ground ball and uh, you know hit the ball hard twice, you've had a successful day, no matter what the 0 for 4 says. And then what happens in that fifth at bat is the player's not thinking about getting a good pitch to hit and driving it. They're thinking about the 0 for 4, and they're going, man, if I... You know, if I if I get a hit here in my fifth at bat, that'll bring my average up to 277, and you know, it's it's just a it's a horrible trap that a lot of players fall into. So can't worry about statistics uh, because, as we know, many stats are incomplete. And you know, I'm a stats a stats guy, stats teacher, but I know that the that. that there's no one statistic that tells the entire story. So it's kind of like a, a culmination of all the different things and then also watching the game. Uh, worrying about winning and losing the game as a whole, you don't have any control over that. Uh, we we schedule a very, very tough schedule for a school our size. And there have been a lot of days where we go out and we play awesome. I, I think our best game that we played last year, uh, we lost 7-5. to five. 
and it was the best game we played all year. And we were just outmanned on the other side of the field. And likewise, if you're the one who is much more talented, and we've been in that situation as well, you know, you can play poorly and win ten nothing, twelve nothing. So the winning and losing um, shouldn't really come into the the gameplay at all, uh, because a lot of times they're out of the con- out of your control. You know, you you play outplay a team and then in the last inning they get a infield single a bloop single hit a home run and the game's over but you've outplayed them the entire game so wins and losses although that's why we play the game they don't always tell the entire story and again we go back to dwelling on past failures and resting on past successes so how do we practice this because we always tell our players we would never ask them to execute something in in a game that they haven't practiced and so to ask them to execute their mental approach in a game when they've never practiced it is is it that goes against our philosophy goes against our principles okay so we want to make sure that the mental approach is the same in practice as it is the game and there's a number of different things you can do to to have this happen um, one of them is in the the manner in which you practice. So sometimes in practice, I understand there is a time and place for just simply getting reps, just simply getting repetitions. We need to take 50 ground balls. We need to swing the bat 75 times. We need to, you know, we need to throw 80 pitches in the bullpen today. But you want to try to keep the mental approach the same as much as you can. And so just as an example of something that we do, our, in our, and it probably costs us some swings during practice, but in the batting cage, we, we limit players to five swings in the batting cage. And the reason we do that is because it, closely simulates an at-bat while still giving them enough swings and I hear kids say all the time well coach I couldn't really get into a groove in five swings oh tell that to the pitcher explain to the pitcher that you're going to need him to throw a whole bunch of batting practice pitches to you so that you can get in a groove and then you can start your at-bat um, or I get this one at the end you know uh, roll over a ball top a ball on, on your last swing hey coach give me another one no tell that to the pitcher Tell the pitcher you want another one. Tell the pitcher, I didn't mean to hit that ground ball to shortstop. Throw that pitch again, and I'll get it this time. So we try to keep the mental approach the same where where in practice there are some consequence, and whether it's just getting out of the cage or, or whatever the case may be, there are some consequences to your performance in practice. So that way it's a little bit more mentally intense for them. Uh, than it would be if we just you know said yeah sure you can have another one ah you missed that last one here here you go here's here's one right down the middle you can get get fat on so um we also try to tell our guys that 10 good reps are better than 100 unfocused reps and i know there's there's a lot of of theory out there on the number of times it takes to change a, a bad habit but if you're just taking 100 unfocused reps uh, you're not processing what's going on. You're mindlessly going through the motions. You're you're getting better at practice probably, but I don't think you're really going to get better at the game of baseball. Um, but those 10 good reps, uh, those can make you better at the game of baseball because you're mentally focused and your mind and body are working together in a way that allows you to translate that into, into game action. So we tell our guys that every single rep is special. Um, and we do get our players limited reps in practice. There are, there's, like I said, there's a place and time for, all right, we're going to field 50 ground balls and work on a couple things, and we're going to hit, you know, take 20, 20 swings off a cage uh, or off a tee, but um, certainly we, we do te- teach them that every rep is special and they don't get unlimited reps. And then also making sure they understand specifically what you're looking for and what the focus is of each drill and each rep that they take.